from the shores of Malibu where the waves are pumping to the Great Wall of China and back to the streets of Miami, Florida, where the UFC is coming. We are live. This is This Time Radio, the show we talk about what you think about but may be afraid to voice. Do not worry. We will voice it for you. We talk about everything. Politics, film, TV, UFC, sex, drugs, rock and roll, you name it. No holes barred radio, folks. So here we are, back for another show. No special guests today, but a special partner and special producer in TJ DeSantis. Hi, TJ. I don't know if I should be offended when you call me special or not. I, I don't think so. I'm going to say it's... Well, I, special is special, my friend. So, you know, I'll, I'll take, take it. it any way you want. I'll take <laughs> it. I'm in Miami right now. Uh, it's beautiful out here. It's like uh, 85 degrees and sunny. It's a little bit you know, on the humid side, but, uh, man, I, I think, uh, the action's about to heat up here in just a couple of days. Yeah, exactly. And I'm glad you told me that because I got to pack, I'm leaving on a red eye tonight. I got to get in there uh, very early tomorrow, uh, business luncheon. And then I'm doing appearances for puncher's chance. For those of you that if you catch the show in time, it's at big daddy's, uh, wine and liquor in coconut Grove, uh, right beside Miami. However, that works out. I don't think it's very far away. And I'll be signing bottles. Come get your bottle of Puncher's Chance and time to toast the Warriors as they enter the octagon Saturday night for UFC 287. Um, love to say hi to everybody. So, by the way, uh, speaking of Puncher's Chance, um, we just got noticed that uh, we have been released and we're in all 140 BevMo stores in California now. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot of stores, man. That's a huge footprint. A lot of stores. And then in Florida, we're in like many major chains, you know, something like 500 stores in Florida. So it's one of our biggest selling states. Wow. Congrats. That's huge. So run out and get your undisputed single barrel version, folks. This is one of Platinum Award right out of the gate. It's amazing. 105 proof. Um, you know, my original puncher's chance is $30, mm -hmm. which was voted top five best sipping bourbon at its price range in America. This one is 59 um, but you know what, TJ, quite honestly, we could be charging twice as much because of the quality of the uh, sweet nectar of the bourbon gods. But yeah, we want to make it affordable to everybody. Yeah. I mean, when you're winning awards like that, obviously, uh, you know, there, there's room to make it a little bit more expensive. But I, I think that is also something that uh, you've hit on. You know, it, it's good to make things uh, affordable and accessible to all. And, you know, why not have a, you know, top shelf uh, bourbon at a, you know, a more comparable middle shelf price? Uh, if it still tastes great and people are loving it, uh, they're going to buy it. Exactly. You know, and it's funny, we're talking about the uh, spirit industry, but you know, Mark Wahlberg has his tequila. The Rock is extremely successful with, I think, a billion cases sold with his tequila. Dana White's Howlerhead is doing very, very well. Very awesome. Um, and now a little bit of uh, interesting note here. How do you feel about somebody being sober, but yet marketing an alcohol? Mm, uh, well, why are they sober, I guess? That's my first question. Well, they're sober, obviously, because... I assume. Well, I mean, I'm quote unquote sober buff. I've never had a drink really in my life. That's true. That's true. That's, that is so. actually, I cannot answer. But in this yeah. case, Jennifer Lopez. Okay. Who is extremely successful, great, strong brand, very talented lady. I have nothing bad to say about Jennifer Lopez. Yeah. Um, and this is not my opinion that I'm talking about, but in the uh, news today, she's finding herself, as they say on the thing, in hot water, mm. whatever that means, announcing the launch of her alcohol brand, Delola. But she's sober. Yeah. So, I mean, here's here's one thing that I've sort of really come to respect from you as well. Like you won't endorse anything that you don't believe in. You're not just going to take a, a paycheck uh, to say something's great and then not actually feel that way. And, and I admire that. Um, right. With that said, uh, I feel like if you are marketing, you know, your likeness and image to something, I should have some sort of faith in the fact that you stand by your product. And if you don't use the product, then I guess it's a bit disingenuous or disingenuous. But they, I mean, the thing is, is she's a brand, right? She's like one of the biggest brands that there are and, in, in, you know, pop singing. And, and, you know, I don't I don't know. Like, I understand why she's doing it. Is it hypocritical? I, I don't know. Maybe I, it doesn't personally bother me, but I can see where someone gets rubbed the wrong way. Yeah, no, I agree. Um I can't comment either way. It's her choice. You know, she's a very strong brand, like you said. Um, who knows? You gotta, yeah. I mean, I would think, how is she going to do an ad for it when she can't drink it? Yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm saying. And, like, uh, yeah, if she's had, like, I, I don't know if she's had alcohol problems in the past, but it, it would be very hypocritical if she had, you know, alcohol problems and she's trying to get people to buy booze. Like, that would be weird. 
Well, the other thing, too, and this is, you know, her personal life is her personal life. You know, she's married to Ben Affleck, and it's no secret to the world that Ben Affleck has a uh, alcohol, uh, has issues with alcohol, um, has been proven in the past. And uh, so obviously he's sober. Right. She's sober. I mean, it would make sense to be sober if your spouse, you know, was as well. I, I don't I know. think so. It's, so. it's just weird, though, because it comes back down to the fact, like, do you want to believe that all endorsements are truly that endorsements? And, you know, I, if someone is selling me something that they uh, are partnered with or are creating themselves, I, I want to believe that you believe in it. But when I know that you don't actually use it, then how do I even know if your fingerprints are on it? True. Well, you know what? It's um, I don't want to say this term, but in the, in the sales term, we, we always have the term out there, buyer beware. So it's up to the buyer. Right. You know, yeah. Whatever you want to do. But, uh, you know, I wish her luck. Uh, one thing about celebrity brands that I've learned in the spirit of the alcohol uh, area, they're not all successful. Right. I would say probably most of them are not successful. Most of them are not successful. Yeah. I'm happy to say the puncher's chance is, is achieving great success. Very proud the way that's all working. Uh, and, you know, then again, I go with Wahlberg and The Rock and, you know, all The Rock's got to do is touch a rock and it's going to turn to gold. Right. Anyway. Yeah. Seriously. You know, if anybody has a Midas touch, it's it's The Rock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I almost call myself, I hate this, but I like it, but I call myself Mini Rock. <laughs> hey, you know, uh, if you can have a mini amount of success like he's had, you're doing pretty damn well for yourself. So. Hey, I come out with an alcohol. He comes out with an alcohol. He comes out with an energy drink. I come out with mine, although mine was in the planning stage before he came out with his, but it's okay. Right. Yeah. All kidding aside, Dwayne, you go ahead and remember it's time, not it is time. So it's all good. <laughs> remember his NFL. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember. I wonder how his league is doing. I heard it's doing OK, but I mean, I just would think it's very difficult to achieve a major success going against the NFL. Yeah, I think there's room for it, uh, to be honest, because there's no real minor league when it comes to you know football uh, in, in, in the States here or really anywhere for that matter. Um, you know, staggering it is going to be key i think to their success but at the same time i just i don't know bruce how many people are going to invest in uh a football franchise that's not their nfl team like maybe you love football that much that you're going to watch it uh, in the off season but you know like like i told you i've already uh, been fed up with my vikings for the last uh you know 40 years of my oh life. yeah you've been frustrated beyond belief right right so like i don't really want to go invest uh my time in another pro football team that might you know give me heartache Right. Right. Um, exactly. You know what? Everybody, the success breeds competition. Competition breeds success. There's room right. for everybody. Let's talk about the big news that's going on this week before we go into any UFC talk. Okay. okay. Obviously, the big news has been that uh, for the first time in, in U.S. history, a uh, president has been indicted on criminal felony charges, uh, which is a very historic indictment. Now, I'm not sitting here taking sides on this issue. Uh, but you know, there is basically, uh, I think most people know or have a feeling to understand there are some semblance of understanding that, uh, these all range from the payments that were made, uh, to the stormy Daniels situation. Um, supposedly, you know, they have tremendous evidence, uh, against them, you know, regarding checks signed, documents signed, money being paid out of. The wrong accounts, however it looks at, you know, they call them hush money payments. This is from 2016 um, when he was part of that, you know, issue with the adult with the you know, adult film actress Stormy Daniels. So I don't know what's going to come of this personally. Um, obviously, it's not good. It's also giving a tremendous amount of publicity, you know, which goes back to the adage. All publicity is good. Publi is good publicity. Just spell my name correctly. I don't know if this is good publicity necessarily. But it's definitely keeping at the forefront. And I wonder what kind of effect it has. And I'm reading where even his popularity is growing. Yeah. Um, and then in about two to three weeks, if not mistaken, he's also got the civil, uh, if I'm correct in saying this, the civil rape trial from the uh, Playboy Playmate Karen McDougal. You're familiar with that? Yeah, we talked about that story a few weeks back. Yeah, no reason to go into detail. Uh, so here he is with that. He's been indicted on the charges. He's been on this, that, and the other. He's going to be in and out of court for weeks, uh, yeah. for a long time. But this I mean, is going like, to go on for a long time. But he's always been in and out of court. We just don't always hear about it, you know, his other business ventures and things like that. Uh, it, it is interesting. You talked about his popularity growing, like in a in a weird way. I, I mean, I don't think he wants to be facing indictment and having to battle with this. But in a weird way, 
this does keep him incredibly relevant at the forefront of your news cycle. And we've seen in the past when Donald Trump is at the forefront of the news cycle, it rallies his supporters and people get behind him. And that's what's happening again. Well, you know, when he first ran, when The Apprentice was such a hot show, you know, coming off it, whether he's on it or coming off it, I said back then that the, he was going to win the election based on the TMZ vote because not very many people and out I, there are political. I thought you were crazy, Bruce. I know. I mean, I was wrong with you on two things and pretty, pretty big things. One COVID, the other one Trump. Yeah. Well, well both from day one, honestly. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not trying to be a soothsayer and I certainly don't wait, like the way a lot of things panned out in different ways. Uh, but, you know, here's the thing, too, TJ. Let me ask you a question here. OK, we, we see President Biden. Mm. The way he handles himself and everything, I'm not putting him down by any standards. Uh, I think there should be an age limit. I really do. I think that you shouldn't be allowed to run for president if you're like 76 or 75 years old, because by the time you're not that you can't yeah. mentally handle things at 80 years old. Yeah. But it is getting a little up there. Yeah. I mean, the, there is an amendment in place where if the president's not in a sound, stable mind. Uh, there are remedies to get them out of power but like here's the issue i don't know i mean i don't really know and i'm not trying to make political allies or enemies here but like i don't know how well put together our president is he talks sometimes bruce and i'm like uh what what happened did you just have a senior moment did you lose what you were saying do you know what you're trying to say because like i don't know it, you know i i want a strong leader and then there are times where biden is talking and i'm just like i i just don't I don't feel comforted by anything this guy's saying right now. Yeah. It is what yeah. it is. Yes. Well, it's all about comfort and it's a tough job to do. I'm not saying that it's not. It's a real tough job. I mean, you look at the you look at a pre you ever see the, the before and after pics of yeah. like uh, Jimmy Carter yeah. or Clinton. Look at you know, Obama. Or, or, or Obama, who is probably the healthiest, you know, best shape of all of them. It's a it's a it's a job that just wipes you out. Yeah. The stress that you wear on your shoulders that the world doesn't even know about, it's it's insane. Well, I'm going to I'm going to say one thing. Um one thing that always amazed me about uh President Trump when he was in office, Donald Trump when he was in office, mm -hmm. had an amazing energy level. You know, and he claims he never had a drink, he's never, you know, whatever, but his but he, energy was like nonstop. He lived for that sort of attention you know what i mean and when the spotlight i mean when you're the president of the united states like there's always going to be a camera on you there's always going to be somebody that wants to talk to you and he was always someone that liked to talk so uh i think that fueled him uh you know the other thing is too is that you know really what we come down to in this situation we and again i'm going to get a little political here mm. i'm not excited about the choices and but then again i haven't been excited about the choices for president for years for for a number of times. I mean, I hate to say this. I don't think either party is super excited about the choices. If they had someone better, they would put them out there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Both sides. Uh, you know, I, I think the the right is a little more behind their uh, choices than than the left side of the equation. But uh, yeah, I, I don't think we've ever had a, a, an odder time when it comes to people running for president that just again this is not a very desirable job i think that this is probably one of the last jobs in politics you actually would really want to go out and get more power to him but more importantly more power to us as people and more power to the united states i just hope it all pans out i just hate the fact that we're living in a day and age when uh this kind of stuff happens you know well, it's a very very strange day and age we live in compared yeah. to what i'm used to in my lifetime well, the thing that bothers me, and I've said this for a few years now, is is when I was a kid, politics were really boring, Bruce. Like uh, I hated watching the news because it would be the House did this and the president did this. And meh, meh, meh. and now like it's pro wrestling, like politics are pro wrestling. They're cutting promos on each other. Feels like we're building up to the pay-per-view. They're going to, you know, fight in a cage match. But I, I, I don't like that. Politics are supposed to be boring. Be political and do your, you know, infighting and debate and all that stuff. But the, the idea that everyone picks a side, like, I don't know, man. It, it's just crazy to me that everyone is like, I'm a Democrat. I'm a Republican. I'm TJ. And I don't have the right answers, which is why I 
elect people in my stead to go do it. I, it's just crazy. And I'm bipartisan. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a practicing Republican, registered Democrat, registered Republican. I'm bipartisan. I vote for the, the best man or woman. Nobody I the best choice I can see. Nobody is one or the other unless you're in that party, Bruce. Like honestly, unless you're a politician. Like there are two companies that support, you know, their causes. And I'm sorry, but I just don't think anybody living a normal life subscribes to one political ideology 100 percent of the time you're going to go back and forth on on different issues well speaking of going back and forth on different issues speaking of pro wrestling speaking of all the combined along with that news last week probably some of the biggest news in the history of sports and the history of entertainment is the fact that wwe the wrestling league is combining with the ufc to form a new company within a combined value of 21 billion dollars this is huge the question I have, um, you know, of course, Dana White, the head of uh, UFC, maverick that he is. Vince McMahon, the head of uh, WWE, the maverick that he is. Uh, Ariel Emanuel, the CEO of Endeavor, the head of everything, the maverick that he is, right? Mm -hmm. um, so with this combination of these two companies, what do you see? What, what do you think is going to happen, if anything, beyond us just moving forward the way we move forward, the WWE moving forward the way they move forward? Do you see any kind of a – beyond a promotional union to promote each party promoting – each party, listen to me – each group promoting each other, do you see fighters making appearances in WWE – Myself, maybe maybe doing a one-off, even though Vince McMahon has publicly said he thinks I'm a little over the top for the WWE, which still cracks me up. I don't know why. Maybe he's mad because in years back, uh, due to misappropriation or you know some not getting a full license to use the Let's Get Ready to Rumble right. trademark, I've yeah. had to deal with the WWE in a couple of minor situations. I don't know if that's the reason. Let's, but let's be honest. You're you're sometimes a little too real for that business. But don't they want to be considered real I'm, beyond I'm, the reality they I'm, show? I'm, I'm kidding. I'm just saying you're as real as it gets. Uh, honestly, what I think is going to happen uh, is it's going to be business as usual. Um, Dana said this uh, earlier this week that basically uh, there's not going to be a lot of crossover per se. I think there will be instances where it does make sense. You have certain UFC athletes that love the pro wrestling world. Why not allow them to sort of dip their toes in that to a certain extent? But I, I don't think the UFC is going to be – uh, pushing anybody that is a top shelf contender over to the pro wrestling side of things. That would be, you know, silly to do uh, when you're, you know, possibly fighting for a title in the future. Why, why should you be starting a pro wrestling run? But uh, the thing that is exciting, I think, for the UFC and the WWE as a whole is the idea that they have a massive amount of resources to go really do whatever they want to in the space. You're talking about the biggest pro wrestling brand in the world, the biggest mixed martial arts brand in the world together as one entertainment company. I mean, the possibilities are truly endless. I think they are endless, you know, and they, they're not just with the live shows with the, you know, just so much, there's just so much that can be done here. Right. And that's, no that's more one thing you mentioned too. The WWE is such an innovator when it comes to production, like their shows are, cutting edge just beautiful pieces of honestly art and uh you know maybe we'll see some of that uh lend to the ufc but the ufc has their own signature style as well like it would be very weird if all of a sudden ufc shows started looking more like wwe shows because i i personally as a fan i don't really want that i don't want the ufc to to look anything other than what the the ufc is and, and always has been but uh again the, the fact that they can put their heads together to make any sort of combinations possible is, is pretty exciting. Yeah. I don't see, uh, listen, WWE is quote by law called sports entertainment, right? UFC is reality fighting, right? Okay. Many fans of the WWE look at everything to be a complete reality. You know, when, when, uh, you know, a wrestler, do they? Like the rock punches you 20 times in the face. There's still people out there that believe yeah, I mean, is there's kids. I think anybody that is a full-fledged adult knows that it's not real. Um, it's entertainment. I, but, I, I think most people that follow pro wrestling, especially anybody that's my age, they're more into like the backstage political wheelings and dealings of the uh, entertainers and performers themselves. And that's when you sort of see the biggest wrestling uh, story angles become – uh, popular is when there's some sort of truth of, of reality. You hear like an athlete there is not happy with something and 
their contract might be expiring, but they're still on TV and there's some sort of friction between me. Like that, those are the wrestling angles that tend to blow up and become huge. So I don't know. I don't think anybody's uh, looking at the WWE and thinking that's what, what fighting is. Okay. I, I, I'll, I'll go with that. But um, I will say one thing that the professional fighters that I've spoken to as an example, such as boss Rutan mm -hmm. and others claim they have never been hurt more than in when they're doing the sports entertainment wrestling, yeah. whether it's the Japan leagues or the WWE yeah. or whatever they, they, you miss marks. I have worked the WCW when Michael Buffer was, you know, as his manager, when we would go to events and he would come out and announce the main event. And I'd sit there and watch Hulk and Sting and Goldberg going at it and char charging. And I've said this before on the show and, you know, I'm here. I won. Goldberg's out there doing his thing. And I'm in the back watching as soon as he walks with the ropes, the ropes close, the drapes close and he collapses on the floor. Yeah. His knees out. He's half yeah. concussed. Yeah. You know? I mean, that that's what's really sort of amazing about pro wrestling. You think about like MMA, you're trying to hurt your opponent in MMA. You're fighting one another. So you're defensive mm -hmm. in pro wrestling. You're working with your opponent. You're trying to essentially give yourself to them in a way where they're going to quote unquote hurt you, but they're trying to protect you at the same time. And that's what makes it so dangerous. Any sort of miscue, you know, you're trying to, you know, make a punch look real. Well, if you accidentally connect and you're just sitting there waiting for them to throw the, the punch that's not supposed to connect, but it hits you and concusses you like that's where it becomes really dangerous. Um, you mentioned uh, Goldberg, like Goldberg was in a, a match with Bret Hart and Goldberg, you know, by accident basically ended Bret Hart's career because he kicked him in the head and he, he connected flush and Bret Hart had a concussion, had to stop wrestling. Um, when you are allowing those things to happen to you and you're not defensive because it's not a fight, bad things can happen for sure. Absolutely. So let, let's take it a step further. You've got entertainment wrestling, you've got reality fighting in the UFC. Now let's talk about movies, mm. making movies. Yeah. I came across an article that I'd like to go over a few stories here. And it's about movies that permanently damaged actors' bodies. Mm. You know, obviously, we know that they're stuntmen, okay? I, yeah. So I'll give you an example. Uh, Jackie Chan, <laughs> let's just face it. He's been injured in every one of the movies he's ever been in. Right. Uh, broken fingers, noses, ankles, tailbones, his hip. He's dislocated his shoulders more than a few times. Multiple concussions, spinal injuries. Uh, the whole bit. The why? Because he does all his own stunts. Right. Okay. Uh, the credits of his films are basically outtakes where he's hurting himself and, you know, showing everyone what he's like. That guy's crazy. It's wild. Now you talk about other guys or men or women, but in this case, a man who throws himself completely into his films. I mean, currently he's like 77, 78 years old, but Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. Now, Sylvester Stallone basically claims that he never got hurt, uh, but in Rambo and The Expendables, uh, he broke his neck, his spine. He's dislocated both shoulders. In The Expendables 3, right, he had his worst onset fall ever, injuring his back. He had to have metal put on his back. That scene he had with, um, I think it was in the first Expendables with uh, Steve Austin, if you remember, where he gets pushed and he jerks back into like a, a falls down and jerks back. It, that broke his neck. Yeah. He had to have a plate in his neck, if I understand correctly, from what his brother told me. I mean, that's really throwing yourself. Now, we're talking about a man who, when he filmed these movies, was 65 plus, my age plus, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Uh, and then you got like, you, you have uh, Bruce Willis and Die Hard. Let me tell you something about Die Hard. I, one of my favorite action films, right? It's a Christmas movie. Yeah. When that, <laughs> when that movie came out, it made Bruce Willis a star. Right. The original poster for Die Hard didn't even have his picture on it. It was just of the building burning. He wasn't right. an action star at that time. A lot of people if you go back and read like variety of uh, of that time. A lot of people were like, this is the call, this guy, because he wasn't that type of actor by any means. Yeah. So he uh, they then they started to put his image on the poster. And uh, during the filming of that, which, listen, you've been shooting, I've been shooting, you wear earplugs, the whole nine yards. Mm. But he has two thirds partial hearing loss in his ear due to a, a fa you know, a round he, he shot off from his gun, which at the time was a blank. Yeah. But he shot at the gun next to his ear. Yeah. Blank or not, it's still going to make a lot of noise. Yep. Um, I could go on Tom Cruise. He, uh, here's a guy you wonder, has Tom he, Cruise ever got hurt? This guy gets hurt. Yeah. Right. Uh, he basically hurt his foot in uh, Jack Reacher by kicking a guy in the groin over and over again. 
and just somehow he hurt his foot. He had to do the take like 10 times. But then you see him in those Mission Impossible scenes where he makes those jump and he cracks his ribs. He does right. this, he does that. Here's another man that's 60 years old, give or take, out there doing his own stunts. All the credit in the world for him, you know? Yeah. I mean, because they don't have to, especially when you're a huge star like Tom Cruise. You know what I mean? They've got plenty of guys that are willing to go out there and do that. But there's something admirable about someone at that level going, you know what? I, I want this to be as real as I can possibly make it. And the best way to do that is to actually do it. Yeah. Or even Daniel Craig is James Bond. He had a, a movie he was fighting um, who I think is really becoming a really good actor is Dave Batista. Right. Batista. Shockingly so. Shockingly like, so. Yeah. Really, really good actor. Yeah. So he was filming a scene with him, Inspector, the W the 007 film, and he hurt his knee, which required surgery. The whole night they wanted to halt filming for six months, but give him credit. He worked through the pain. He finished the film. So, you know, I know some other people that have blown ACLs and done three shows in a row the day after. So, you know, the show must go on. <laughs> a little uh I think I know that guy too. Yeah, I think I know that guy too. Now, how about Uma Thurman? You wonder if she got hurt uh, in the Kill Bill movies. Oh, right? yeah, for sure, right? She had to. I yeah. mean, she was doing those stunts. Like, that's a what great films, by the way. I love both of those movies. Do you remember the, the scene in Kill Bill when she was driving the car? Yeah. Well, they said, hit 40 miles an hour. Your hair won't blow the right way. I'll make you do it again. She was in what she called like a death box because the seat wasn't screwed down properly. Okay. It was a sand road and not a straight road. She lost control of that Carmen Ghia she was driving, crashed into a tree, oh right? which left her in so much pain. Strangely enough, how bad she was hurt in the film, but left her in so much pain that she 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 would believe she'd never walk again. Oh, my God. Are you serious? He was left with a permanently damaged neck and screwed up knees. Oh, my God. Because that's a problem, too, Bruce. Like, you know better than anybody when it comes to knees. Uh, knees and back injuries and neck injuries, they might, quote, unquote, heal, but you're never the same. Mm -hmm. Never. How about Jason Momoa? Stud, right? Mm. Total stud. Yeah. I mean, a, a specimen. Aquaman, you know, demanding stunts. Everything else that he did, uh, got a hernia, ribs out, felt like he was beat up. I mean, it, it, people might think that making movies is easy, but if you're out there doing your own stunts, because it's one thing to see a scene like when you watch John Wick 4, right? Or John, any John Wick movie. Mm -hmm. Those simple two-minute fight scenes, or let's say that, that I don't want to give away the movie, but there's a scene on a long staircase in John Wick 4 towards the end of the film that must go on for about 15 minutes. Well, that, that probably took two months to film. I don't see how they could have done it. The, the intricate work, the, the coordination, the choreography, everything that's involved. So whether you're doing WWE, WWE, making films or in the UFC, you know what? You're putting your body on the line. Yeah, for sure. Now, speaking of putting your body on the line, and again, we're going to get into the UFC and stuff, but I, this one story came out. Um, a pilot makes an emergency landing. Right. South African pilot. He had four people in his plane. He's flying and he feels something uh, like underneath his shirt. Something cold was rubbing against his skin underneath his shirt. Mm -hmm. It was a cobra. Oh, my God. A cobra was in the plane. Oh, my God. And on him. Right. Now, a cobra with his fangs out, one has enough venom to wipe out nine people with a single strike. Right. I'm talking a, a snake that can kill you right. like this yeah landed the plane didn't tell the passengers about it finally told them about it everybody stayed cool got out of the plane they couldn't find the cobra <laughs> they couldn't find it after all that was done so wait they never found it they never found the cobra okay you, you talk it, about it, you talk about uh what's samuel jackson snakes on a plane right i'd be dropping yeah. f-bombs like samuel jackson like crazy if that thing was on me yeah uh now I'm just starting to think, is this pilot okay? Like, are we sure I don't know. it was a cobra? I know that every time I get on my plane, if I'm in South Africa, knowing it's indigenous oh. for those kind of snakes, I'd be, I'd be checking every inch yeah, no, of that I, plane. I, yeah, that's terrifying. It is. Terrifying. It is. Do you like snakes? Uh, not particularly. Not yeah. I would like have them as a pet. I mean, when I was in Australia, you know, I held one. I've held snakes before. I've had friends that have had... Um, you know, the snakes, they feed them mice and stuff like that. Right. And, yeah. I well, mean, when I was, when I was growing up, my dad had a python. We had a, well, a Burmese python. It was like 10 feet long. It was huge, massive. 
That's huge. Well, when I growing up in Malibu, we had snake, we had rattlesnakes all over the place, right? Right. My friend Mark uh, Smith, a friend of mine, um, used to live up on the hill above my house. And I remember he'd be yelling down at me, holding a rattlesnake in his hand that he just caught with his bare hands. Kind of crazy, right? What are you? That's. And my dad, my dad would take my German Shepherd buff hiking, and when and he'd always carry a thirty-eight snub with shot shells in it in case he saw yeah. snakes. You know, three shot shells, three hard, three uh, regular um, casings. And uh, they went out there one time, and the snake, according to my dad, was all rolled up, and it was going to take out the dog, right? So he took it out, shot it. Mm -hmm. I went back, found the snake. I cut off its rattler. It had 13 rattles, which meant it was a 13-year-old wow. rattlesnake. Dang. And it was at least about, I would say, four feet long. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. That's yeah. absolutely crazy. I, uh, I've i seen the rattlesnakes in Southern California. I uh, thankfully have always seen them like in the street. Um, never come across one when I didn't know it was there. Uh, but yeah, that's... Uh, it's uncomfortable to say the least when you see how big some of those snakes are. Absolutely. Absolutely. But you know, such is life. So I think, listen, snakes are essential. They, they oh, do for a lot sure. of good. Absolutely. As are spiders. But when you see one crawling around, you wonder what it is. Yeah. And usually it's a garden snake when you see it around. Right. Your house. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. The one that is, is hard for me. Uh, I'm, I'm terrified of them. And I unfortunately know a lot of people are as well, but they're very vital to our environment and that are uh, bees. I hate bees. I think they're fascinating creatures, but uh, yeah, I, I just very vital I, though. If I see a bee, I want to get the hell out of there. Yeah, but very, very vital. Do you know that I, I heard this recently, but in the farming of avocados, a tremendous number of bees die. For whatever reason, really, the farming of avocados. I wonder so, if the avocado tree is like something that they try to nest in, and the, the I don't know. I don't know. Um, I think it was Pierce Morgan was in an argument with a vegan protester. You know, because uh, sometimes they they get a little harsh in their protesting. You know, against uh, the treatment. You know, vegans and the, or, or people in the treatment of animals. You know, they'll pro throw paint on things, ruin things. I mean, they're kind of not the. He was arguing with them about how they protest. You know, do you really need to protest like that? And he mentioned this statement. And I'm like, I don't quite understand that. I should have done, I should have done a little more research before I brought it up. Oh my God. I'm reading this and, and out <laughs> another snake story snake uh -oh. versus snake guy sitting on the toilet and his penis was bitten by a four foot snake that was inside the toilet. This is in Thailand. What? He's sitting on the toilet. There's a picture of it right here with blood. Oh, on the I don't toilet. want to see the picture. I don't want to see the picture. No, I'm not. I don't want to show you the picture. Oh. But he was sitting on the, the snake came up through the toilet and he bit him, bit him on his uh, unit. Uh, non venomous, thank God. Yeah. It was a python. It was a python. So, I mean, yeah, pythons, thankfully, I mean, they do have teeth, but not like you think, you know, a cobra, uh, which has venom does. But uh, I don't know, dude. Like, I, a snake down there biting you anywhere? I'm talking even like your thigh? No, thank you. Just get it away from me. No, thank you. Okay, let's switch roles here. Uh, Major League Baseball, they're rolling out a new food, food menu for 2023. 34-inch mm. sandwiches. <laughs> what is that, three feet almost? Uh, Yeah, 36 would be three feet. Yeah, and then they have what they call the Boomstick Burger, two-foot-long chili cheeseburgers. How does that even work? I'm looking at the picture of it here. The Boomstick Burger is a two-foot-long chili cheeseburger topped with onion rings, cheese. I don't think you'd pass this thing for a week. Yeah. You know what's interesting? I went to a, a baseball game yesterday. I saw the Twins uh, play the Marlins, so my hometown team was was in Miami. Um, and this is the first baseball game I've gone to, Bruce, that had the pitch clock. So the pitcher has to pitch the ball within 15 seconds of getting the ball back. Uh, and, and that is very new. Um, most baseball Did we discuss the new rules on, on the show yet? A little bit. Uh, yeah. It was a while ago, but now the season's actually started, so you're starting to see it. Uh, most baseball games are anywhere from, you know, a quick baseball game would be two and a half hours or two hours and 45 minutes. Very quick. Um, I went to a ball game yesterday, and uh, we were in the seventh inning, an hour and 10 minutes into it. Like, the game was almost over in two hours. I think it was, I think it was two hours and 10 minutes, the whole game was. It's crazy. Wow. I don't like it. I like being at the ballpark, you know, eating food, enjoying the day. 
Uh, well, it's an ex- you know people can say whatever they want, but if you understand the great game of baseball, yeah, it's quite an experience to bring the kids to and everything yeah. else, the field, the food, the whole well, it's, atmosphere. It's, it's it's more a in person sort of experience than say you know watching it on on TV. I understand you know we, we live in a time now where live sports are very valuable, so uh, you, you want to sort of be concise and and know you can get X amount of uh, commercials and all those things on and sell that revenue, but. Uh, it just, it's weird to me, especially when it comes to like playoff baseball, when, you know, the, the managers want to sort of overanalyze every situation, they're not going to have a lot of time anymore. It's, it's going to be, I, I, I just, I don't like it. I hope they can sort of modify the rules because, uh, it just feels rushed. I agree. A little collectible talk. I, I can't uh, um, elaborate more than what you're saying, but I do agree with you. Uh, but uh, listen, I, I'll say it again. Baseball's a great game to play. Baseball's a great game for young boys and girls to play to get team, you know, the whole team yeah. camaraderie feeling. Baseball is what I did as a kid after school when we could go out and play at 12 years old and not worry about God knows what you have to worry about these days, except on an extremely rare occasion. Hey, we should um, get our guy back on. We should get Pete Rose back on to talk about this. Yeah, we can get Pete on. Um, still right. should be in the Hall of Fame. But, yeah. Uh, you know, it's just a great game. I get home for dinner. I mean, baseball just really, I, I have so many great fond memories of baseball. Quick note, I want to get into UFC talk, and I want to get into our, our sponsor, medicaleverything.com. I want to mention them after this, and then we're going to talk UFC. But moon dust. Lunar soil uh, from the 1976 Soviet mission yeah. uh, that was taken off the moon is up for sale now, right? Yeah. Like just a small amount. Yeah. Right? How, uh, for three tiny pieces, how much do you think it's going to go for? Uh, 170, 170 grams of moon dust. I don't know. I, I don't even know a ballpark sort of equation for that. $1,250,000. But why? It's moon dust. I know it's out of this world, but what purpose does it have? It's just dust. I know it's from the moon, but it's just dust. We talked last week about a couple of crazy things. I mean, there's a buyer for everything. It's amazing. Yes. I mean, it's just, there's always that there's a, there's a, well, I mean, that's, born that's, every minute, and there's a sucker born every minute. That's you know? the thing. Someone's willing to pay that, therefore the price is that. But, I mean, how many people are willing to pay that, and does that continue on down the road, or is it 50 years from now something that someone paid a million plus for is worth a hundred thousand dollars? I don't know. Because I mean, I gotta say, if I had a hundred million dollars, I wouldn't even spend a million two on this. Yeah. Are we going back to the moon anytime soon? Because that's the thing you got to worry about. Like, I've not been in any board meetings with NASA recently, so I really okay. can't tell you. All right. Yeah. I think I missed my last one I was invited to. No, I'm just joking. I'm surprised you haven't been up there on one of those rockets yet. You know, if I had a chance to go, I'd go. Oh, I know you would. I would not. I would tell you, I would go. I mean, you should bring Eddie Bravo, and then you guys can tell us that the world is flat. Uh, it would be too much of an argument on the way up. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about our sponsor, MedicalEverything.com, the site to go to for medical advice and many other things. Check it out. They've got some really good articles happening this week. Uh, One of the articles is, um, you know, people think a lot of protein is good for you. I come from the school. and Yes, it is. No, it is good for you. But, you know, you can over-protein yourself. Um, Basically, I come from the school of understanding that with the exception of being a huge bodybuilder or whatever, the body can only hum- the human body can only consume like twenty two actively twenty two grams of protein in a sitting. Yeah, so like nutrients and vitamins and uh, things like that, um, your body can only absorb so much. Like when you uh, have like uh, a glass of orange juice, you're getting a thousand percent of like your vitamin C intake for the day, uh, but really you, your body can only take in a hundred percent of what it's going to take in. So you're you, ten times the amount of vitamin C is just passing through you without really you know getting absorbed. Exactly. Like you can eat, it says here, you can eat up to 300 grams of protein a day, but that doesn't mean you're going to put on more muscle than someone who takes in 120 grams of protein yeah, a day. Yeah. You know? I, I do know that uh, from my experience, and I think this is why a lot of people that are on diets do protein shakes. Uh, protein is pretty important when you are taking a more uh, caloric restrictive sort of diet. Um, if you get more protein, you, you tend to feel more full. It does a good job at making you feel like you've eaten more than you actually have. So I'm all for people, uh, maybe supplementing, uh, you know, more protein because they're not taking in as much food. It's a little more comfortable, but, uh, I don't know those macronutrients and stuff where it's like, there's a reason dietitians are who they are. I, I'll never fully understand it. I'm with you. Um, well, everybody check out medicaleverything.com. 
another article here, something most all of us suffer from time to time is neck and shoulder pain, whether yeah. it's tension from work, sitting. They've got seven really solid tips here how to deal with it. There's many other articles here. I'm going to check that out of us, because these, uh, go these through damn hotel beds buffer. Like, they kill my back. How is, are, you in the, are you in the UFC hotel? Yeah, yeah. The, these, this bed's actually great. Um, Thank you. Can't but uh, uh, I, I was just uh, in, in Mexico last week, and I'm still recovering from that crappy bed, so. Yeah, well, I can understand that. You know, no, this in is Mexico a, again, they found four more dead people in Cancun. You got you got to be careful in Mexico. I hear you. That's why I rolled deep careful. with Eddie Bravo. <laughs> well, at least you're surrounded by a bunch of bodyguards. So in that pretty respect, much. yeah, 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 pretty much. Just like me when I'm at a UFC. There you go. Yeah, they always say I got your back. I go well until I'm on my back. You don't have to have my back. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> it's all good. But thank you guys. I appreciate it very much. Um. Okay, so medicaleverything.com, check it out. We all go through many issues. It's a really fast-growing site uh, run and created by our friend of the show, Gary Randall. So I highly recommend everybody check it out. Okay, now let's do this. Let's step forward. Let's end up the show with our UFC talk. We have one of the biggest shows of the year, which I feel, I feel so repetitive, TJ, because I'm always saying we have one of the biggest shows of the year because we've had so many big shows. That's but going that's right the, into the marketing thing. machine, though. You know, that's the thing. They all feel really that big. It doesn't feel like you're uh, overselling it or overhyping it. You have one of the better rematches you can make for a championship fight. Uh, I've been picking up where they left off last November. Uh, Israel Adesanya uh, trying to get his belt back from Alex Pajeda. Um, can you guess what the line is on that one? Yeah, Adesanya is minus 140. Yeah. And uh, Pereira, Pereira is, uh, say his name. Per Pajeda, I I have it's, to go. It's, there's two different ways. It's yeah, a matter of the way he wants yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I haven't heard him say it. Um, I, I say Pajeda, but that's more from the other Brazilians that I've talked to with the same last name. They might he might do it a little bit differently. But uh, this is what's crazy to me. This is their. Here, fourth... I'm gonna I'm gonna share something with you. Okay. Okay. Uh, this this, this is, is the I don't rehearse. Yeah, as you know. Yeah. But the USC is such a well oiled machine. Yeah, you get, get the audio file, don't you? We get the sound file. So yeah. let's see how let's see how he says his name. I can't play it on the air where you hear it, unfortunately. What the Pereira. Pereira. Yeah. Okay. Pereira. Um, that's hard for me to say. But uh, uh what was I saying? Um, the uh, oh yeah. So this is their fourth meeting. It's their second meeting in mixed martial arts. Their fourth meeting overall. Uh, Izzy's zero and three against the man, but he's still the favorite. Explain that one to me. Well, I can't explain it. Um, it's very hard to tell how Matt. And also, the other thing is to remember the initial line that comes out is the realistic line from the matchmaker, but then the betting changes it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Betting, it's not about it. It could become even, and that's right. not because suddenly they're even. It's because right, the right. betting. Yeah. Changes. The money. Yeah. The 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 sports book is going to even out their win loss ratio uh, based on who where the money is going but uh, it's hard to, it's hard not to take a champion as happened in the last fight first time i thought a champion was an underdog yeah last show now you have it if you're gonna bet i'm not telling you that I, i'm all about best man wins right but the more exciting bet is where you're getting odds on your money and he is the champion right and that's the thing too is you know anybody that bets fights or sports for the most part they will tell you you're not betting with your heart necessarily you're betting the value and uh, there, there's value there on a sitting reigning champion who's won three of their only three meetings before. Uh, and granted, Izzy was doing really well in the in the last fight, the the first uh, mixed martial arts fight. Um, but I don't know. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, like that. That's the thing too. Is Adesanya is just a a true champion with class. He met that loss with with just great respect for for Alex and. Um, it didn't seem like it rattled him, you know, losing that belt. He's a, he's a guy that, uh, his entire identity pretty much has been on this rise in the UFC, getting up to championship level. And, um, we're going to see how he reacts to that loss, uh, coming up on, on Saturday, but, uh, I don't know what a great fight. Well, he's a cool cat. And when I say cool cat, he's a very calm, cool, collective cat, uh, and he was very open and honest as he ha as he seems to always be in his in his interviews. But like he said, he said, you know, he he understands the way Pereira, 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 I'll get it all down by show night fights. Um, he can overcome them, but for some reason, Alex comes back. Yeah. You know? And he's got that vicious left hook. 
Yep. Um, he's just against back. And you're talking to a man that's only like, I, I remember correctly, seven and one in his MMA fights. Yeah, he he's is. Eight MMA fights, and he's yeah. a defending middleweight champion right now. So it's a very exciting match. But previous to that is the return of uh, Jorge Masvidal and Gilbert Burns. Jorge hoping he beats Gilbert to take on Leon Roberts, who we would love to fight. This and is he the he's going to retire. He claims yeah. He, he said this is it for him if he doesn't make it. Well, I mean, this is a a tough fight for, for Masvidal, to say the least. Gilbert Burns stylistically poses him a lot of trouble. Um, not only that, but Masvidal's fighting in his hometown. You know what I mean? It's uh, one thing to take a tough fight. It's another to take a really tough fight and do so in your hometown when, you know, the fans are going to be coming out and showing their support. I, I mean, the nickname is Game Bread. He proves that time and time again. He's not afraid of any sort of challengers. Uh, we're going to see what happens. Um, I, I don't know. Maybe we'll see Masvidal truly walk away uh, if he doesn't, you know, get his hand raised on Saturday. But like this guy is such a fighter. I have a hard time thinking of Masvidal not as someone who's going to get ready for a fight again eventually. Well, Gilbert Burns is just a bruiser of a fighter. Yeah. You know, uh, almost he, a five to one favorite in this fight. Is he really? Yeah. Four and a half uh, minus 450 right now. Okay. Well, Again, I'm not saying who's going to win, but if you're going to bet, right. how can you not take a five to one odd bet? Yeah, I'm seriously. You know, in their hometown. I that? mean, in that case, if you, and again, I'm not saying who's going to win, but just knowing betting, right? If you parlay Jorge Masvidal to Alex uh, Correa, yeah. yeah, and you bet fifty bucks, you're probably going to get a three hundred dollar return. Oh, I can tell you exactly what you'll get. Give me a minute. Keep talking. While you're looking that up, the couple of fights I'm very excited about. It's always great to see Kevin Holland step in against Santiago Ponsonibio. Mm -hmm. That's going to be interesting. And Michelle Waterson, I love watching Michelle fight. And she's coming back uh, as the number 10 contender against uh, Luana Pinero. Uh, that should be a very, very fun fight. Gerald Merchart, always good to watch fight. Chase Sherman coming back against Carl Williams. Cynthia Calvijo against Lupe Godinez. That's going to be a really good brawl. Um, there's some Gary, and there's like three women fights on the uh, female fights on the card, which is cool. Total Still of, uh, on this. 13 fights. I think we lost one. We have 13 fights. I'm having a hard time getting this uh, this line here. There's a little calculator that uh, usually gives me uh, what I want, but it's not uh, it's not showing up here. This is at the uh, Kaseya Center. You know, they changed the name. It was the Miami Data Arena, but they've changed it to, if I'm saying it correctly, Kaseya. I got to make sure. Yes. Uh, okay. So I got it here. So uh, <laughs> the parlay, if you put the parlay on Masvidal and uh, Pereira, uh, plus 981 is the comeback. So that means you bet 50 bucks, you're going to win roughly $475. Yeah. I mean, how is that not? I mean, it's 50 you, bucks. So I mean, it, we're talking $50. Right. I mean, how can you not take advantage of that? Yeah, if you're someone who likes to have some skin in the game, go do it. Yeah, I mean, whoever wins, wins, whether you're you're rooting for uh, Israel and yeah. you know, whatever. It's just, it's, it's or Gilbert, you know, together. I mean, how do you not right. you just have a little tickle pickle, you know? There, there you go. You said it. Yep, exactly. Okay. Uh, I Like I said, I'm flying out on the red eye. Um, very happy to announce that, uh, again, maintaining its status, but it's time is still the fastest selling cologne on Amazon. What am I getting my bottle? I have, I've got your, I've got a whole list of people in to get gift packages. I'm just waiting for the, we have two distribution centers in the United States. So everything's going to be going out, but it's going to be more than just the cologne. I hear so you. You will. Or you can just stop by the house. Cause I got some here. Uh, are you in town next weekend? I'm in town next week, except for Friday. Cause I got to go to Kansas city. Ah, dang it. Tom Loeffler has a show in uh, Hollywood. I know. He asked me about it, yeah. Yeah, I was hoping you were going to make it, but you'll be flying. I'll be flying. Yeah. Son of a gun. Yep. What can I do? <laughs> There'll be more. There'll be other opportunities. Definitely. Uh, okay, so let's see here. I can't think of anything else to go over. Um, I just – go ahead, TJ. Let's sign off and tell the tell the world what's up. Yeah, I'm uh, live here in Miami doing extra rounds. Uh, we'll be live uh, Friday here uh, on the ground and then Saturday as well. 
uh, as we you know preview and recap UFC 287. I'll be joined by UFC fighter Hannah Goldie uh, to sort of break down everything and talk about what's at stake and uh, how it'll all spin forward. And you know, you said it, Bruce. It's truly one of the best shows of the year, and uh, UFC keeps uh, keeps on doing it every month. It, it seems like we we have an event of the year sort of on paper, and uh, you know, more often than not, these cards definitely live up to the the billing, and I expect nothing uh, less than that on Saturday. Exactly, exactly. And a little additive to what we were talking before, uh, the lines have changed. Okay. Israel is now minus 145, Pereira plus 115. Okay. Uh, and Jorge is uh, plus 365. Okay. And Gilbert's minus 525. Wow, so that keeps going up for Gilbert's favor. That means the Great. money's going on Jorge. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, crazy. Yep, people are betting him. Kevin Holland, minus 250. Yeah, against Ponzinibbio, who's a very tough out. Um, very tough. And Michelle Waterson is an uh, underdog at plus 140, I'm seeing here. Man, again, I'm not trying to tell people to bet, but like the, the underdogs are – they're curious underdogs, to say the least. Yeah, they are. Yeah, Even, sure. even if they are underdogs, I mean, you're just getting the odds that I'm like, man, that's, that's a worthwhile bet. Yeah, totally. So anyway, um, TJ, I will see you, everybody from the uh, well, Kaseya, if I have this correctly, the new name for the arena. Yeah, I'm sure the show is going to be sold out. The bottom line tickets, the the face value tickets at the top end floor seats are twelve hundred and fifty dollars. That's crazy. That's, that's like the most I think I've ever seen for a road show outside of Vegas. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, except for except for the garden, you know. Right. Well, I mean, that's a different beast uh, all on its own. But uh, I mean, th that's how hot a ticket this is these days, Buff. Like. UFC doesn't really come to town all that often. You know, only select few cities have, have you know, had the luxury of having the Octagon uh, touched down since COVID. And uh, Miami's a fight city, man. Uh, it's kind of crazy. Uh, the first time the UFC ever came to Miami was roughly 20 years ago this month. Uh, UFC 42 took place where Matt Hughes defended his title against Sean Shirk. Uh, it, it's crazy to see where the UFC has gone in the last 20 years since they made their Miami debut and uh, what they got going on Saturday. It's, uh, it's remarkable. It's it's crazy. Well, they're not paying to see me. They're paying to see these great fighters, and I think this is a hell of a show with all these fighters. And I, it's worth every penny. This is an amazing show. Yeah, I'm going to be very excited doing this show. I'm, I I don't even know what jacket I'm going to wear yet. It's 80 degrees, so I mean, there's a lot of parables or rather variables I've got to weigh. Yeah. I don't want to be a sweat ball walking into the arena. Yeah, you, should, humidity, be, you should be. You should be. I mean, that's the thing, man. You cannot wear a jacket outside. Do not wear your coat outside, Buff. Uh, do you get dressed at the venue? No. No? Okay, so you can dress No, up. I get dressed. I go to the venue dress and go back dress. Yeah, uh, just you might want to make sure you, uh, you don't put that suit jacket on when you step outside because you'll melt. Hey, let me ask you a question. How far is the arena from the uh, hotel? I do not know that yet. Hmm. I've not been over there, but uh, everything seems to be, because we're in downtown, everything seems to be within 15 minutes. Oh, okay, cool. Cool. I got to figure out my drive. Okay. Or my car. All right, everybody. TJ, pleasure as always. Next week, we'll be back with a, a guest on the show. Make it an exciting show. Um, everybody's been a wonderful week. The rain has stopped here in California. The weather's amazing. It's still cold. TJ, I'm getting one of these cold uh, pools for my, my home, right? You okay. Know, one of those plunge things. Yeah. But the pool I have in my house, because it's been so cold, I just don't turn on the heat. I wake up in the morning, and it is like 35 degrees i have a i have a cold plunge already that's going to disappear in a few weeks oh my god i'm going to say one thing about this cold plunge yeah it's been around forever yeah it is not new right but the popularity and the trending of it is new with fighters everybody talking about it show sore shoulders sore back whatever the case might be it's a godsend tj yeah. i go in that pool when i wake up in the morning for three, four, five minutes, you know, that's probably all you need. I, I don't know what the actual time should be, and I'm going to learn all that. You feel good, alert, woken up, the body, any yeah. kind of body. It just, it, it really is amazing. Yeah, no, I mean, so I've I've fallen in some frozen lake water, uh, my fair share of times, duck hunting and things like that in, in Minnesota. Uh, your body goes into a different sort of mode when it feels frigid like that well and, uh when you're doing it to sort of heal ailments and and you know get your senses going buff there's no better way to really get things back online and that's the thing you know about the the shoulder aches and pains and things like that like the the cold when you can submerge your whole body and it does wonders for inflammation and things like that 
Let's just hope it's not hypothermia. <laughs> well, I mean, it is. It really is. That's your body. I, I went in the pool. I got to tell you, I went underneath the water. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. I'm thinking, how do people fall through the ice and survive? You see these movies where they fall through and they're swimming. Yeah. What the heck? Yeah. I mean, my body feels like, and I mean, I'm listen, I've served in the most dangerous conditions you can imagine yeah. and have cramped up. And that was scary enough. Yeah. But hypothermia, so, I, I, forget, I think it takes seven minutes or something. I forget the. It, it, it depends takes. on the air temperature, too, because that's the thing. It's not just about the water, it's about the fact that you'll get out of the water and it's still below zero or, you know, below freezing. Um, again, like I've fallen in the, the water. I've had. Uh, some really bad problems, not an actual frostbite, but very close to, to frostbitten hands. I have nerve damage because of it. And uh, one thing I will say, when your body gets really, really cold, your brain starts to compute that that cold uh, as almost uh, hot. And uh, while you're freezing to death, essentially, your body can actually feel like it's on fire. Yeah, well, I, I felt my lungs closing, like breathing. Yeah. Um, but I felt great when I got out. So with that being said, I want to thank everybody, by the way, the amount of uh, orders coming in on my cameos and the uh, videos and, and championship audio intros being ordered at my site, brucebuffer.com. have been increasing like crazy, but now father's day is coming up. I'm getting father's day orders, uh, uh, school graduation orders. And I want to thank you all. It's been a lot of fun filming them. And I'll, you know, I just really have a great time making everybody happy with that. I'm on cameo. And TJ DeSantis on Cameo, take advantage of it. I, I wonder how TJ, much I'm charging. Uh, not enough. Maybe getting two orders? Months. No one ever booked. No. no, I haven't gotten an order in like almost two years. Have you put out a tweet that you're on Cameo? No, no. Well, then you can. That, there's your answer to your question, right? there. Hey, I'm on Cameo, people. Go. All right, buy a Cameo. He's on Cameo. All right, everybody. Uh, again, fifteen dollars. Smell like a chant. Well, that's TJ DeSantis. Fifteen dollars. Yeah. Again, they're you not. You need selling. a manager, brother. You need a manager. Okay, Fifteen dollars. So okay, fine. What do you want me to put it at, Bruce? I'll put it up to twenty-five. Thirty-nine ninety-five. Thirty-nine ninety-five. Uh, I'm just gonna make it forty dollars. No, thirty-nine. Okay. Don't don't you know the secret of billing? Yeah, but thirty-nine I can't, ninety-five. I can't put any pennies on this thing here for whatever reason. All right, then make no. it make it make it make it thirty-nine dollars. Thirty-nine dollars. All right, done. All right, everybody. For forty four dollars, give or take, on Amazon, you can smell like a champion with the charismatic, sensual, enhancing smell of this time cologne. The reviews are through the roof. Very excited about that. And big cheers, everybody! Puncher's chance. I'll be appearing at Big Daddy's in Coconut Grove Friday, uh, the night tomorrow, the night before the show. You probably won't know about it because this won't be up until Friday, but it's being publicized everywhere. I hope to see you there. I'm going to sign your bottles and enjoy your puncher's chance during the show. Okay, with that being said, I'll be back next week. I'll see you from the Octagon on Saturday. TJ, as always, it's a pleasure. I'll see you in Florida, hopefully. See you in the hotel. Whatever. Yeah, case I'm be. around. All right. And uh, everybody set your goals. Write them down. Make sure you're a role model to your sphere of influence, showing everybody respect around you in this decaying society and morality we live in. Let's stand above it and be the best we can be. But when you step out on that gold brick road to your future, perform at your best, be the best, then you're winning. Whether you're first, second, third, or the champion of the world, you are winning. Just be the best you can be and be a good person. Man or woman, dog, animal, you name it. Let's all try and show this world how we all should be living and respecting each other around us. Thanks very much for tuning in, everybody. Buffer out. Have a great week. Big cheers. No fears forever.